All right, I, I know, don't tell me, I know it. I know it's February, but people are still talking about the turkey giveaway, which took place in West Roxbury. Uh, bottom line, this thing was awesome. Police, uh, Roach Brothers, West Roxbury Business Association all coming together. 50 turkeys delivered, and uh, these guys tell me it was all about uh, just a team, team effort. Roach Brothers is in a community with donating like 50 uh, turkeys and fi uh, fixings for the needy families in the area. It's a tradition now, probably been doing it for 15, 20 years. And uh, all the various members of the community uh, pitch in and Roach Brothers donates the turkeys and we bring them all out to the people. This is really a special event for us and for the uh, community service office. And we have uh, Deputy Baston out today and uh, Sergeant James uh, Jameson. So uh, we're doing uh, pretty good and we feel pretty good about this. All of our captains, uh, including our uh, wonderful Captain Jim Hassan, uh, have been so cooperative and helpful. We know because of the work that the police do that they're out there and they see people who um, who are in trouble, who are in need. And uh, it just uh, is so helpful uh, to be able to do something nice for these families uh, um, uh, in conjunction with the police department. Today uh, is our way of giving back to the community. Uh, it's been a tough uh, economy and this, this seems the best time of the year. You know, like always, uh, we've been doing this for over, over at least 10 years. Uh, we've been giving out uh, turkeys and groceries to the families. Uh, and uh, this, this time of the year is where things are getting tougher and tougher and the economy is getting tougher and tougher. So there's an opportunity to give back. When you can help out a family, uh, especially this time of the year, it's, it's a great feeling for both. Not only for us, because, you know, like I said before, it's, it's better to give than receive. And uh, I just thank God that we have this opportunity as venue to do so. Elvis was in the building, everybody. All right. West End House Boys and Girls Club was the scene. When, how long ago? A month ago. December. Yeah. Charlie Moore, there he is, everybody. Hanging out. His hat's, I know it's, it's, it's a little tilted, but it's, he's looking good. Charlie Moore and my main man, Stern Chamberlain, are in the house. Tonight we're talking about this tournament they put together. I want to show you some of the video. Again, 160 kids involved, uh, and we're going to get into the story of how it all came about. But in addition to the kids having a lot of fun, I, I, I think you probably recognize this gentleman here. That's Tony Allen of the Boston Celtics. Kids, as you can tell, I don't know if they're mesmerized or about to fall asleep. I think they're mesmerized. <laughs> but in addition to Tony Allen, you had Big Baby. Excuse me. Uh, I know he's not watching, so we can call him Big Baby. But Big Baby Davis was in the house as well. He had some great stuff to say, and we're going to get into that as well. But, I mean, again, let me just say it real quick before we bring out the guys. This tournament, putting together, putting it together, was all about effort and some guys who, uh, who care about giving back and making a difference. So without any further ado, let's take a look at these fine guests. Stern with the Carolina Blue yep. <laughs> shirt on, and Charlie Moore. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. No problem. Um, December, it happened. Yep. Okay, first things first, and we know a lot of people made this come together, just the fact that you guys are here, okay? Yep. We got the police department represented, and we get the Boys and Girls Club in the house. Um, Where did the idea come from, though, it, itself? Did you just one day say, hey, let's have a tournament, or how did that come about, Charlie? Well, the idea came about um, during patrol. Um, I was you know, doing a walking beat and one of the um, local housing developments. And I was approached by a group of kids who I'm familiar with, I see them all the time, you know, and they, they love sports. Um, they approached me and pretty much, you know, made a, told me that they didn't really have any activities in the Austin Brighton area, mm -hmm. um, that there wasn't a lot of tournaments, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of things for them to do. Um, what about us kind of thing? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, they said that a lot of the people in other cities, other neighborhoods, you know, they get a lot of funding for tournaments and other type of recreational activities. Mm -hmm. And they felt kind of left out. Um, so from that conversation, it lasted about 20 minutes. And after that, I was kind of thinking. And I decided the next couple of days to kind of look into it and investigate a little bit. Yeah. And see to if, see they, if they what were they were saying was true, true or to see how to make this thing happen. happen. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I looked into it and I found that there was some, but very limited. Okay. Different things for them to do, different options. So. All right. So you think to yourself, these kids have a legitimate gripe. Uh, I want to do something. Before, well, one of the most important things to do is you got to find a place to play. So how does this relationship kick in? Is, is, is Stern your first phone call? Do you say, hey, these kids want something. Can you help me out? What, yeah. what happens? Well, pretty much, like I said, I decided after that to, to you know, try to do a basketball tournament. Um, and, and I figured I'd have to need, uh, would need a lot of help from the local you know, establishments, the local businesses, and the local teen centers. Um, first place I went was to the West End House. Okay. Um, and when I went there, the first person he said, when I told him what I was trying to do, yep. 
They said, Stern's the guy you want to talk Stern's to. Stern's your man. He's the one that, you know, <laughs> he actually has a league that's going on now. He's the one that handles this. And they, you know, connected me with him and ever since then. All right, so let me stop you. So they tell you Stern's the guy to talk to. Yep. Charlie comes to you. Yep. And what's your initial impression? You're like, I, we can do this? You're like, hey, man, I got I my, own, <laughs> my own leagues going on here. What do what, what you think? It was pretty simple. You know, the words he, that just came out of his mouth, like, hey, I'm looking to start this basketball tournament. And boom, that just sparked up, you know, an image in my head, which mm -hmm. I had already had the drive for to do. Because obviously, like you said, I was running my own league at the time. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, for these kids, all you want to do is push, 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 and give them more, yeah. you know, um, outlets or activities sure. that they can be a part of and, you know, have fun. Now, the fact that Charlie was a police officer too, Stern, we were talking earlier, yep. you, you, that was important to you. Yeah. Tell, tell us why. That was really important to me because I know in the past, you know, I've been working at the West End House for about five years now. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, for one reason or another, when, you know, a police officer walks into the yeah. building, you know, all the kids' He's eyes run. light up, you know. Who's in trouble? <laughs> Who did what? Yeah. <laughs> they automatically think, like, you know, something negative, yeah, yeah. you know, is going on. That's why they're in the building. Which... That's kind of like our cross to bear. Yeah. And that's why, yeah. just to pick up on where you're coming from, that's why I couldn't agree with you more. Stuff like this is so important to do. Yeah, exactly. But uh, once they found out that, you yeah. know, we were trying to round kids up to start this big tournament, right. you, know, their, you know, their images changed, when, you know. You know, right. Or the impressions that they had on Char Officer so, Charlie So are they Moore. calling you Officer Charlie? They're calling you Officer Moore? What are they calling yeah, you? Everything from Charlie to <laughs> Officer Moore. Yeah, yeah. so they're like, hey, yo, and yeah. once they hear what Stern's laying yeah. down, they're like, hey, Charlie, what's going on, yeah. man? <laughs> it changed quick. So you, you put it together um, in December. I mean, how, I imagine that's a lot of work. I yeah. mean, how much work is it? It's, it's a lot of work. Um, we had to do a ton of stuff, everything from getting the funding, yep. um, going out to local businesses, getting you know funding, a place to play. T-shirts too? T-shirts. Yep. I, I can't help, I gotta, I gotta reference the t-shirt. I love the color, uh, yeah. I'm a Carolina fan. Yep. Somebody gave you a good deal on the t-shirts, I understand? <laughs> yeah, um, his name's Jim from the Winter Pro Shop in okay. Winter Mass. So he helped out, I mean, we had very little time to get the shirts. And limited made, dough. And, yeah, limited yeah. money and all okay. that stuff, and he made it happen. All right, so you, you get t-shirts, place to play, no. Scheduling. Yeah, scheduling, getting the teams together. Te yep. now the, the, and I, I imagine that's where Stern came in, but yeah. you need kids. I mean, you, that wasn't just a small attorney. It was 160 kids. Yeah. yeah. 16 teams? Yep, 16, 16 teams. teams. So how did you, how did, where'd you come in on that end? Because that's, I mean, God. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord, I need a lot of kids. God, but I mean, God. Did, did kids hear about the attorney? Or was it, yeah, was it just so, kids that you know through the 